from the makers of Cold Water Omo. Hey, look. Look up ahead. Soldier. Looks like a major. Steve, Merlin, and Jenny Thurston, with Yates in the back of the van, were finding their way across the deserted town of St. Catherine's. Ahead was a major. It was Major Parsons, alone, but with a drawn revolver. Slow down. It's about time I made myself known to the authorities. You sure that's safe? Oh, uh, don't worry. Hey, Major, I'm John Steed, security clearance KR5. Might be able to give you a hand. No, no, don't stop! No. Merlin suddenly stretched out a long leg and stabbed his foot over Jenny's foot on the accelerator. The van leapt forward. The van caught the Major and sent him flying. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. an OMO user, always an OMO user. This is what Mrs. Lyons of Yellowwood Park, Durban has to say. It is the one part of that does everything. Well, for me, I know that. Yes. There's so many things that I've, that I've used and experimented with just to prove cold water OMO. Really to put it to the ultimate test. You know, and I find that it's what's well, come up to all my expectations. Yes. Cold water OMO Cleans best. What's in the world's ice cream freezer today? I say, wow, wafer. What what's inside? Wow, creamy strawberry and vanilla ice stuck together with munchy wafers. Wow's wow wafer. Wow. <laughs> Episode 5 of this story, in which John Steed returns to help the unconscious Mrs. Peel, but finds she's better off sleeping through the now disastrous events of the morning after. John Steed was a very puzzled man. He now knew that the reason the town of St. Catherine's was deserted was because Brigadier Hanson's men had discovered that an atom bomb was concealed beneath the Trade Commission building. Once the bomb had been located in the dank, empty cellar, martial law had been proclaimed. Platoons of nuclear shock troops had been rushed to the area to help dismantle the bomb. Steed had been told all this by Jenny Thurston, a television news commentator who dared to stay on after the district had been evacuated. Jenny showed Steed and Merlin films of what had happened while they'd both been asleep. Steed, on his way back to Mrs. Peel in the TV van, thought he could give the troops a hand. That's why he had hailed the Major. But Jimmy Merlin thought otherwise. Merlin, you sure of this? I'm quite sure. You swerved the van, you might have killed him. Many people have tried. He's a cat. He has more lives than most. Well, right, come, let's go and find out. Stay here with the eight, Jenny. We shan't be very long. Come on, Merlin. Steve and Merlin clambered out of the van and walked hurriedly back to the unconscious form that lay near the car park. All right, let's turn him over. Well, uh, there's no doubt about it, Steve. That's Parninsky. Well, let's search him. He may have identification. Look, I, I don't care what cover he's got. I know this man. Hmm. Says here, Major Parsons, British Army. It's all the correct papers. Well, of course they're correct. He wouldn't be walking about this place with foreign papers on, would he? I tell you, it's him, Steve. It's Gregor Parninsky, and he's a foreign agent. 
I haven't got proof of that. You have my word. As a double agent yourself, that doesn't count for very much. Ah, don't be a fool, Steve. It's because of my checkered parts that I know all these people. Don't you see that? And in any case, why should I lie to you? You are trickier than any wagon load of monkeys I've ever encountered. The sooner I contact the authorities and the sooner you're put away, the happier I'll be. All right, have it your own way. I give up. What's happened? Is this the man you thought it was, Jimmy? Yes, Tim, all right. But Steve doesn't believe me because he's in uniform with the correct papers. But it's... Parninsky, all right. Is this possible? Of course it's possible. Look, infiltrate poses an army officer. Any skilled agent who knew his business could do it blindfold. It is possible, I admit. But if it's true... Then, then he may not be the only one. Well, answer her, Steed. Tell her all about the firing squad. That's what's really been bothering you, hasn't it? You mean the shooting of that man? Yes. Steed doesn't believe that this country's got to that state, no matter what the emergency... Isn't that so, Steed? Well, this is worrying, I agree. A man was murdered, executed, shot, butchered in cold blood without a trial. Do you really think the British Army is now empowered to carry out such forms of shooting? Is this type of rough justice allowed? Well, Steed, I admit that it doesn't fit in with all the other things I've been told. It doesn't make sense to murder a man in cold blood without trial. Why didn't they just arrest him, ship him out of here as a, as a criminal? Well, someone may have taken the law into their own hands. That sergeant who had a go at us? Well, one thing is certain. We ought to let Brigadier Hanson know if there's any more soldiers like that on his staff. And any more majors who are suspected agents. Oh, you do what you like. I think we should just get out of here. We can't run out. Can we, Steve? I thought the situation was suddenly becoming simple and straightforward. No. Right, we'll go to Hanson. Steve, every street is blocked off or patrolled. We'd, we'd never get near that building. We'd be taken prisoners and dealt with like that fellow Cartney. We'll just have to keep our fingers crossed and hope we're lucky. Lucky? Look, believe me, I'm just as confused as you are. But one thing I know, this is not going to be solved by luck. No, sir. The three of them left the Major where he was and bundled back into the van. Yates, inside, demanded to know what was going on, but it was all too complicated to explain. Jenny started the engine and skillfully backed the van. I think there's a side road behind the church. If I take that, I can double back and approach the commission building from the other side. That should give us a better chance. Well, just a minute, Jenny. I'd like to go to Barchester Street first. Barchester Street? Where's that? On the other side of town. What? What for? I left a friend there. I've been trying to get back to her for hours. Now that's where we're going and no arguments. But Steed was a little late in this decision, for Sergeant Hearn and his troopers had been scouring the near neighborhood searching for them. They had entered the office building, and in the room marked the Poston Trading Company, they had found the sleeping form of Emma Peel. Sergeant Hearn looked down at her. <coughs> well, what do you know? All right, men, relax. <coughs> the sergeant dropped down upon one knee and felt Mrs. Peel's pulse. Then he straightened up and moved to the table upon which lay Steed's briefcase. He snapped it open. He took from the case several papers and scrutinized them. Mm. John Steed, the name of the joker who clobbered me. All right, men, stay out of sight. I have reason to think someone will be coming back to pick this woman up. <laughs> After all, you can't blame them. I can only hope that Mr. John Steed gets here very soon. Steed, Jimmy Merlin, Jenny and Yates were actually on their way when... Hold it. Look there, down that side road. Army trucks, quite a lot of them. Stop. Don't go looking for trouble, Steve. We, we've got enough as it is. Stop. I want to take a look at that lot. It might tell us something. Jenny stayed at the wheel. Yates poked his head out of the back of the van, and they both watched as Steed and Merlin walked towards the army trucks. There was no one about. Jenny saw Steed jerk up the canvas drop that concealed the inside of the first truck and look inside. She saw him look swiftly at Merlin, and they moved to the next one. After completing the line, they hurried back. What's happened? How many men were sent in here for the emergency, Jenny? Four platoons. Four platoons of nuclear shock troops. That's right. The best. What is it? What did you find over there? Four platoons of nuclear shock troops. All drugged. All unconscious. What? But, but, but if they're there, then, 
Then, uh, then who is out at the commission building? Who is handling that atom bomb? At the commission building, Brigadier Hansen was confronting a very distressed Major Parsons. The Major, who'd come round in the street, had staggered back and blurted out an incoherent account of how he was knocked over. You are a fool, Major. Yes, sir. More than that, you are a dangerous fool. Your incompetence could jeopardize the whole operation here. Yes, sir. If these people were to contact the outside world... Uh, no, they can't do that, sir. The phones are out of action, and uh, we're jamming all radio signals. It seems to me that they might just walk out of the area. After all, it appears they can walk the streets with complete impunity. I, I was taken by surprise, sir. Uh, the van... Don't just... offer me excuses! When your people approach me, they promise me professionals, Major. Professionals! Instead, I'm surrounded by rank amateurs. I want these people found. And I want them found immediately. That is an order. The people in question had by this time arrived near the offices where Sergeant Hearn lay in wait for them. They parked the car, and all four of them walked carefully to the main entrance. There, Steed stopped and produced some keys. I want your word of honor, Merlin. Oh, taking these blasts and things off at last, Steve. Good. I'm only undoing the handcuffs because I think there'll be trouble. Oh, you can rely on me, Steve. You have my word. That's better. You know, I'm touched. I'm really touched by your faith in me. Uh, don't be. I'm doing this because I don't want to find myself dragging around a dead man. Careful now. All right, Jenny. Yes? Yes. Uh, what, Mr. Steve? Lead the way. All right. In the upstairs room, Sergeant Hearn waved his troopers back into cover and waited. Mrs. Peel slumbered on. Mrs. Peel? Mrs. Peel? Oh, still sleeping. Come in. <laughs> what, what now? Well, I think we should get over to the commissioner's building. Uh, get out if you ask me. Oh, no. Stay where you Wait, are. Take cover. <laughs> Steed dropped down to the floor. So did Jenny. Yates panicked. Oh, I'm going out. Darton shot him in the back. As he fell to the floor, Merlin moved like lightning. He hurled a trooper across the room. <laughs> Made for the door, was through it in a flash and slammed it behind him. After him! Stay where you are, Steed. One move and you're as dead as that man on the carpet. Both of you, hands above your head, right now! something you must do for him. Give him all new Procos health food for dogs. It's complete. New Procos contains all the energy-giving vitamins and protein a healthy dog needs. So with new Procos, you need feed him nothing else. New Procos health food is all he needs. Care for your dog. Give him new Procos health food for dogs. It's complete, and he'll love it. They say once an OMO user, always an OMO user. Here's Mrs. Senior of Mboggan Tweeny. I've stuck to cold water, Irma, and I'm still using it. It's the strongest washing powder I've used. There's no dirt or stains that can stand up to cold water OMO. The Avengers. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo. <laughs>